Well, here we are, guys, some 10 hours later at Hole in the Wall Beach. And we're here in the full expectation that we're going to get some beautiful sunset colour in the skies. Fingers crossed, nothing certain. <laughs> you can read the, uh, the cloud maps and forecasts on windy.com and make an educated guess, but um, whether it ever comes to pass, I don't know, but we'll see. If you don't go, you won't know. <laughs> up doesn't look like there's going to be anyone else down the beach here there's no cars but maybe someone down there i suppose and there's where we're going hole in the wall 400 meters down this track this away now the funny thing about hole in the wall beach uh, is that it's always quiet in the summer it's an absolutely stunning beach as you'll see but because there's this 400 meter walk down to the beach it just doesn't get as busy which is absolutely mental hole in the wall beach is in the buddhary national park here on the south eastern side of jervis bay right at the very end of the buddhary national park there's only one other beach to go around that way before the peninsula ends that's murray's beach but murray's beach faces the wrong way Hole in the Wall Beach faces sort of west, which is what we want, obviously, to shoot a sunset. A hole in the wall gets its name, in case you were wondering, from a rock structure at the end of the beach. A little bit of a sandstone, I think it is. And once upon a time, there was indeed a hole right through the rock. At some point in the um, 1970s or 1980s, nobody really seems to know, the top of the hole collapsed and now it's more of a tooth in the wall or something like that. But it's a very, very nice little bit of rock and if the tide's out, we might be able to walk down there. If not, it doesn't matter. I've had a sneaky peek at the sky and I'm not convinced it's gonna fire to the extent I'd hoped. Similarly to this morning, I suppose. Although actually this morning was pretty damn good. But, um, you know, we're here and we'll photograph it. And there is still a gap, so there is still a chance. No camping, no dogs, no fires. Well, welcome to Hole in the Wall Beach, everyone. The hole in question is over there, that thing. Stick it out and uh, looking at the sand, we may well be able to walk around that way. In fact, it's looking okay. Um, over this way, we have a very beautiful tree just here, which I am almost certainly going to photograph. I have done most times I come down here. It's a very photogenic tree. Over in that direction, around the beach, you've got Scottish rocks just over here. And further around, you've got Green Patch. And over the other side of the bay, you've got Huskisson. Obviously nice and quiet down here in the winter season, but never gets super busy here. Often get um, yachts moored out here. You can see the boys in the distance maybe on the screen. Over on the opposite side of the bay there, you can see Hyams Beach, just to the left of the antenna, and then further around in that direction is Huskisson. So uh, if you haven't been down to this part of New South Wales before, the Buddhary National Park is on the southern side of Jervis Bay and it's managed by the local Aboriginal Rec Bay community in partnership with national parks. You do have to pay to come into the park. I've just got one of the two year park passes because I come and go quite a lot, but you know, you can buy a day pass if you're coming down for the weekend. Now the whole of Jervis Bay is without a doubt, a photographer's paradise. You can find all sorts of different environments around here from 
rugged stony beaches to beautiful white sand beaches like this one and many others. You've got 80 foot cliffs towering over the entrance to the bay and you've got sea caves, you've got pristine bushland of course inside the bay, inside the peninsula here. And the whole place is just paradise as far as I'm concerned. And I come down here as often as I can for that very reason. There are surprisingly few locations though to photograph a sunset in Jervis Bay. And this is one of them because the, this part of the peninsula curls round, but the end of the bay is over there and it flattens out. So basically, if you want to photograph the sunset over water in Jervis Bay, you have to come here or uh, Murray's Beach boat ramp, which is just over there. Uh, or perhaps you can get away with it round at Scottish Rocks and Green Patch and those places, but you will have to shoot over the ocean and the land. You can't shoot purely over the ocean if you wanted to because they're further around the corner and you just haven't got the angle to the setting sun. Everyone likes photographing different things, of course, but for me, it's always been about the color in the sky. And that's why I favor photographing at sunrise and sunset. And I also prefer shooting on the beach. I think it's because I'm from the UK originally. And while I've been in Australia for about uh, 18 years now, the beach just doesn't get old for me. I wasn't raised near the beach. I was raised in North London, actually. But um, I love being here, particularly when I've got the whole joint to myself, like I do at the moment. Now, there's a little bit of chop on the water, which is ruining the aesthetic for me slightly. So what I was thinking I might do is uh, dig out the tripod and the... Uh, the 10 stopper, the ND1000, and do some long exposures. We can do quite long ones, I think, probably uh, a minute even at this time of day with this amount of light. So let's dig out the camera and get on with it. What little golden light there is, is lighting up the side of this tree quite nicely. It's a subtle effect, but very pleasant. And so I'm gonna shoot across the creek here. Still long exposure, sort of a minute or two minute exposure. And we'll see if we can get, I'm gonna to have to come back a bit actually. Can't go too far because I'll be in the creek. <laughs> Let's try there, oh, there we go. Got the whole tree in the shot now. Let's take that ND off so I can see what I'm doing. Oh damn, that's beautiful. Got the creek flowing to the left of the tree. The tree is pointing up from bottom right to middle center of the frame. Let's pop that back on there, and I'm gonna go straight to a two minute exposure for this one. sunset now 16 minutes to go and it's not getting any more colorful oh black cockatoo this one's finished let's have a look at it yeah that's pretty nice oh, I'm happy with that that looks sharp as anything can we get away with a portrait do we think long exposure in this spot I always like to keep my options open I think I said this morning yeah that's really nice if we do a lot if we do that then I can get way more of the tree in it's a much more balanced composition actually because the creek is now the same distance from the left frame as the tree is from the right side of the frame another two minute exposure at f8 ISO 160 but this time in a portrait orientation
I'm going to put the tripod down. Let's pop these legs out. So I'll just splay the tripod out. Boop. That's one. Oh, this is so awkward. That's two. This third one's bloody stiff. There we go. All right. They're all splayed out. Put this bad boy right down low. And we can really see these textures in the sand then. Another two minute exposure. Down at F8, brighten it up a little bit. Because we're losing light, of course, so you have to compensate for that. But not seeing much in the way of colour. That's the um, hole in the wall over there. You can just see the gap to the right of it that used to be the hole. And it's now just a gap. And there is a human sitting in the gap, I think. It's a seagull way up in the sky, soaring around on the thermal. All right, getting pretty dark now. It's about 10 minutes past sunset. And as you can see, we did not get any bloody color. Oh well, that's photography for you. Sometimes when you least expect it, you get some amazing light show. And sometimes, when you fully expect everything to be awesome, they're not. So what I'm doing now is, I've got the branch of this tree. I'm gonna light up with my head torch so you can see it. This branch here is arching over the little creek directly in front of me. It's absolutely beautiful with that little creek flowing through there. Now, is that middle exposure? That's slightly overexposed, actually. So, I'm going to use the EV compensation to knock it down a stop and take the same photo. Because obviously, when you're shooting three bracketed shots, you want one that exposes correctly for the shadows, one that exposes correctly for the highlights, and one that's right in the middle. And that one that was exposed for the highlights, it was blown out. It still is actually, I'm going to have to come down another stop. That's minus two EV now. That's the one. Got there in the end. There's such a wide difference in light at the moment. We've just got this quite bright sky and this incredibly dark foreground. So what I'll end up doing, I think, for this shot, because I haven't moved the camera, is I can take that exposure I just took now that's correctly exposed for the highlights for the sky and take one of the earlier bracketed shots for the tree. So I think it will be um, a tone map from a selection of nine different shots. I think I'll wrap things up there, guys. Um, the explosion of colour that I was expecting did not materialise, but that's OK, uh, because we've got some really nice shots. And whilst I love the colour, I'm not disappointed when I don't get it, if you know what I mean. So, as always, thank you very much for watching this video and for tuning in. If you enjoyed it, Please hit the old like button down at the bottom of the screen there. And if you'd like to see more of my content and more of my photo vlogs in environments like this, then hit the subscribe button too, if you know what's good for you.
All right, guys, I'm going to pack up, go and have a much needed Gatorade. Me mouth feels like a badger's arse at the moment. And uh, go home and have a look at me photographs and start editing this very video you're watching at the moment. All right, guys, till the next time. Ta-ta.